Hi, everyone. Please let me know if you hear me right. And I hope everybody got the reference photo, whoever wanna paint. Uh, I posted a link. in the chat. Can you hear me properly? <laughs> I just would like to have some feedback before I start. So we will paint this black and white cat, which is our cat. The reference photo is on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. The reference photo is on Instagram on the link. I hope several people will paint with me. So take your watercolor paper. Mine is Arch or Archie's cold press, 16 by 20 inches. And I'm using my watercolor pencil, but you can use a normal pencil. Watercolor pencil is a little bit better. Or you can use a lightly stained thinner brush to, to, to make some sketch which help you later during the painting so i start to sketch how many people are painting with me Please type if you have question or feedback or anything like that. I changed the direction of the tail because otherwise it wouldn't fit. So at least one person painting with me, I hope. Whoever painting, let me know how your sketching goes. So you can see I'm not labeling too many things, just the outline approximately.
I will use some masking fluid for the whiskers and a little bit for the ear, maybe a tiny bit here around the eye. And maybe I add a little, I honestly don't know how it's called in English, eyebrow. <laughs> I guess it's not an eyebrow, but this is how I call it now. So I'm kind of happy with my outline. The only thing I would change, I would move a little bit this way, but I'm not restarting this. It would be a little bit better if it's a little bit more in the middle. So I hope you reach the same point as me. Next thing will be the masking fluid. It's not necessary, but it's help with a few things, with thinner lines like whiskers. It's really hard without the masking fluid. Or even, let's say, to make that thin, it's probably impossible without the masking fluid, but there are methods, scratching or you can use, um, people use, sometimes they put a paper uh, towel around a credit card or something. And with that, you can make very thin lines, but especially negative thin lines, it's pretty hard. So when you use the masking fluid, try to be fast because otherwise it will be thick. You can test on your paper how much it's dripping or what it's doing. So when you're happy with it, you can use it. I do a little bit the outline of the ear. and the line around the nose. And I think that's enough. So this will take a few minutes until it's dry. So the next thing while I'm waiting is that I dilute up a little bit of black paint so i put this a little bit aside here so this is my dish this is my leftover black paint it has a little fiber in it i took it out so i have a little fresh one it's a lab deck from daniel smith I make it wet. And I use a thicker brush to dilute it up. Maybe this one. On the end, I would like to have something uh, heavy cream consistency.
while, while I'm doing this, the old paint also come off a little bit. So you want a pretty dense paint and you don't want big chunks. That's the aim I'm trying to achieve here. Please let me know in the chat if you need time for catch up or where you are standing if you are painting. If you want to ask question, it's a good time because I need to wait a little bit longer. So I have a few minutes of free time right now. So if you want to ask question in the chat, it's perfect now. Hi. <laughs> I hope at least few people painting with me. Let me know if you paint, if you want to paint, but you are a little bit late or something, you need a little time. Or you just didn't finish yet the masking fluid or the outline. I, I checked, it still need mine, still need, you can see it's a little bit stain my head. So it still need a few minutes to dry. Don't ever paint on that. Um, I so I'm answering the question how I choose the photo. So it's usually I think the movement more than the so the body posture more than the hair style of the cat. This one is a short hair cat. I like short hair cat actually. Um, I like when the face is not frontal. I like when the body is in a good interesting position like in a movement. So it's not just um, a very rigid po po posture. Also, um, I like when uh, the photo is from eye level or, upper, or or closer to eye level. So usually when a cat is on a floor and you just take the photo from, from standing, that's really bad because you, you look the cat above. So you want something where it's more like eye level or more natural. So it's more like more the position and the, and the photo angle than how the cat look like. Also, it's important if you do a tutorial, I cannot choose a copyrighted photo. <laughs> so this is my photo of our cat. So look like no, so far it, at least for me, it's look like nobody painting. So I don't need to wait for anybody. So it's good now. So I use a spray bottle, but you can do this without a spray bottle, just with a big mottled brush. So I wet the paper. I want a really wet paper, but not dripping. Um, this is my old Mottler. I really like it's a no-name cheap Mottler. Mottler can be very expensive if it's if it's uh, a good brand because it's a lot of hair. But uh, this Asian style big Mottlers work 
awesome and they are pretty cheap. It's below 10 bucks. So I just make sure it's wet everywhere. You see, when I first wash the brush, it's a little bit like cloudy color coming out. It's because of the sizing. So watercolor paper have sizing on a surface, which is a very important part of the paper. And it's really defined the quality too. I'm trying to correct the focus. For me, at least, it's looked pretty focused now. <laughs> I hope it's not losing the focus. Is it better now? On my view, it's look OK. Maybe I just make a line here. Maybe I put a little object somewhere. I don't know. Put tap on it. Or maybe actually I put it here because it's more further from the painting. Maybe when I start to add the big black, it will focus right. So after you wet the paper, you just really wait a minute or two, not more. And I start with the pretty, pretty dense black paint. And I usually go from inside to out because it will, it will probably run or flow. So you just want to first see what's going on and how much it will run or flow. And when you think it's good, you're happy with the result, then you go to the outline. And then you always uh, let a little space to things decide what to do. So, and then you can see so it, it, it's always need a, for this technique, you always need to wait a little bit to, to allow the, the paint and things moving. So you don't see the result of your lines right away just after a few minutes because it's generating this, this furring out and stuff like that. And you want to see how it's going. And so it, it takes always little time and then you know what's going on. It's even a little bit too much furring on few places. So where you have issues, you can use keep clean wipe and if you need to clean a little bit, you can. Or you can just decide to change the pattern of the cat a little bit to adjust the. So for example, here I have a little bit more black than a cat really have. On my, my view, on my monitor, I can see these tiny hairs. So I hope it's good now uh, with the focus. 
If not, I don't know what I can do because the black is pretty strong. So I hope it's hard the camera to find. So what is important, I think, is to, bra to be brave. Uh, don't don't be too careful. I mean, it's not it's not a precision work. You you really I'm really using a very big brush and I'm just counting on the behavior of the watercolor. So. And depending on the wetness of the paper and my paint consistency. Okay, I hope, okay, I'm glad it's better now. So let's hope it stays that way. So it has a little pattern here on the chest. I will work on with a smaller brush around the, the eye to be more precise. And how I work with the white area, so I can do two things. I can use a dirty brush to add a shadow to given places. But I also can use, um, I can paint a little bit the background darker, like I'm doing right here. And I can add um, shadow also, which help to pop the white. And of course, I always use a lot of wiping. So when you when you need, just don't hesitate to wipe off things. The earlier, the better. It's harder to wipe later. So here it, it's because I dried, it's not furring properly. So I'm adding a little water. Unfortunately, it wasn't perfectly clean. I bring a completely clean bowl. Actually, two of them. I think for this style, uh, the hot press, uh, sorry, the cold press is better. Uh, you can do it on every paper, but um, the result will look different. So I, I suggest um, either cold press or rough. The rough is, is, is just even coarser. I always use for this just a uh, uh, cold press. But if I don't have other paper, I, I can use the others too. It's, it's a little bit personal preference. It, it's, it would work, but Probably the hot press would be the harder to work on because, um, yeah, because it's very smooth and 
I don't even know how it's varying. I like it. I like the 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 hot press. I usually use it for landscape. So I'm taking a thinner brush. Um, let's say. So this is a size six, and I try to be a little bit more precise here. I also choose this cat because you can't, so there are not much detail on the face, so it's just harder if you are a, a, a beginner, if you, if you have eyes and stuff. Uh, so it's just easier a little bit. No. So you see until it's it's that it's easy to change things, but later it will be much more difficult when it's drying. But you still can wash back and wipe back things if you don't like it. So regarding the leg, <coughs> uh, the, the little drawing part of the leg, um, I usually use... Um, uh, the reed stick, the same tool I used for the masking fluid. So it looks like this. In the previous live tutorial, somebody asked me about um, where I got it, and I it's actually I found that now you can buy it in Blick. So I I put the link there if you if you're interested. So what you can do, you just make it first a dirty color probably. So try and make it not very black. And you can use it for, for drawing if you want to. So I, I want to interfere a little bit with the head area. So I'm using a completely clean brush. I don't like this bump here. My, my, my brush had a little pinkish color in it. So I'm taking another brush. I hope it's cleaner. So this is how you wash back, just completely clean water and clean brush and you loosen up things. And you turn the clean side of your wipe and you can kind of remove, not 100% because it was on a drier side, but this is enough for me to, to make the changes I want, hopefully. Okay, so I'm moving back to the... Mm 
Thank you for the information regarding the rate stack. I didn't know even Walmart sell things like that. <laughs> I really like that tool. I think it's a really good tool. Uh, for There are so many tools you can buy for a masking fluid, and I tried many. And honestly, I, I wasn't happy with them. <laughs> so it's, I really tried several things. Another thing what you can do is, is called the washback technique or many people call this way. So when your paint is in this stage, it's pretty settled, um, but not dry. You can just add water and the water will wash back the paint and it will generate this structure people usually refer as blooms or cauliflower of the watercolor and you can use that thing for the painting which is really really a unique thing for watercolor and although many people hate it and try to avoid it uh, you can also use it uh, uh, on purpose so you just add water to your paint and that we do the thing. So I'm using now a thinner brush to work on a little bit on the details on the feet. Still nobody painting with me, just me alone. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> and how the magpie working out good This cat is, has a beauty dot. I just lighten it for now a little bit. So as soon as it's enough dry for uh, removing the masking fluid, I kind of ready for that. Thank you. And also thank you for Rachel to <laughs> raving about me. <laughs> I'm always really hoping somebody painting and looks like it's, although it's just the second time, but I was hoping somebody were painting with me. Maybe next time. I was looking for the thinner brush. So I'm a little bit trying to work around the face. Make some details here. I want this very light, so I don't want this line. Thank you for the idea, for getting the reference photos. If you somebody have a cat and you want to send me a photo, I might use it for a live tutorial. If if I found it, um, it just, it just it's a personal preference. It's nothing nothing personal about the cat. It's just 
sometimes I see how I want to paint and sometimes not. And it's hard to paint when I don't see it, uh, how I want to paint. I even try to change the shape a little bit here, I think. I hope it's not too late. Just want to go higher with the black. I want red, but not like super wet. And I think I will use probably a smaller brush for this because it's not, <laughs> it's a little bit dangerous at that point. I hope it will work out. So last time I used um, the hair dryer at that point, um, I don't have experience with because I heard the uh, hair dryer can can be bad if you if you use masking fluid, but I didn't found any, so I, it was completely fine last time. So I don't know what is the the truth about this thing using hair dryer but i might use a little bit um because otherwise it just probably would take too long to to waiting for the drying thank you for the link <laughs> i will check i'm I'm the worst person with the Facebook. I usually not even open for weeks, but I will now. <laughs> Just let you know, don't be surprised if I'm not reacting. I really not using the Facebook. I usually use the Instagram a lot. Uh, like not daily, but almost daily, let's say. I check um, if you want something, that's probably the easiest to to catch. So I'm being, bringing the hair dryer. I don't know why it's not starting. <laughs> Give me a minute. Something wrong with the connector. I don't know why. Or the hair dryer. Ah, the 
it's the connector somehow not <sighs> Sorry for the noise. Sorry for the noise. Like uh, maybe make it lower the, the volume for a minute or two. I'm not sure it's ready, but I try. I can see here it's a little bit still red, but maybe for the area I need, it's probably good. Yeah, it's worked great. Try the ear. Be very careful because this is the point when you can make a really big mess, but you know, you're not all, <laughs> not live, so you can wait until proper drying. And that's what I suggest. You would be much better if you just wait properly uh, drying alone, which probably take an hour or two, or if it's really wet, maybe several hours, but you will see. I wouldn't use the hair dryer if it's not uh, live and I'm going to finish in a decent time range. So here it's a little bit probably, oh, okay, it's good. It's coming off good here too. Okay. When you do this, you remove also be careful because if it's, if this little scraps have paint on and you do this, you can also make a big mess. Check your hand also, use a finger which is not dirty yet. <laughs> so it worked, but it wasn't ideal. You can see it, when it's dry, the paint is dry, you don't get this in your hand. It's absolutely nuts. When it's dry, it's not stain your hand. So if you do it like me, be very careful, but I suggest not to do it like me. Uh, just wait. It's just better that way. And then clean your hand before you start to work. This is what I'm doing now. Just dipping in a clean water and wipe it off. Okay, I think I'm good. 
So the last part is usually more with a thinner brush. Not always, but usually. So I just want here a little. It's, it's a double line, which was my mistake. And I also don't want this very strong white line. So um, if you see the photo, it's not like, it's not an edge, not a, not a, a, a thin white line. So I try to get just this light effect, but not a white line. Same with the, the other white line. So I just want them like, let's say gray and not as, not as straight and exact as it's happened from the masking fluid. So I just work on afterwards a little bit. Same here. This line is a little bit more important because it separates the, the two area. I think it's good. So here, a little bit. So I showed in the last tutorial, I have this really neat um, thin ink pen, or I think it's ink pen. It's called Faber Castor Pip Pen. This is not the right tip, but this is the same pen. I need to find the one with a thinner tip. So this is the good tip for this kind of like whisker. You can have even thinner. I think this will be fine. So this side where um, it's the cat is more white, I just draw a little bit the whisker. And also here between the between the black and the white, and I just let the white continue the same line. Okay. Maybe one more here. Okay, I think that's enough.
trying to make this shape a little bit better here. I just need a very light gray on my brush. Not too dark. So if it's too dark, just lighten it up with the wipe. And I'm waiting for this area to dry to add a little edge here. Uh, so it's hard because this and this area is the same color, but I try to I try to make a little tiny lighter line between the two area. So I'm drying it up a little bit. If you do this, be careful. So check your paper and if you see it's dirty, you always turn it around because that dirty, that, uh, dirty area can make a, a very ugly mark which usually really hard to remove. So I don't know if it worked out, but I'm trying. So I'm making this area darker and then this area darker and try to leave a little space between the two. I think it's good. I mean, you can you can see. And it's not much left. I probably will finish very soon. So you can see if I if I do this line first time right. It would be much nicer like here, but it's not always work out. It's, it's a little bit. With this technique, it's really good to do things with one brush stroke, but like, and just let it fur out like here. But if you need to change it, then it will be a little bit different. But it's not a big deal. I'm just saying, like, it's usually the best when you have to touch the less. And somehow what with watercolor, it's always, I think in the beginning, the hardest thing is to not overdo it. So I remember I never knew when to stop and I always had a good something and I just made it terrible <laughs> on the end because I always thought, oh, I want to work here a little bit or here a little bit. But for watercolor, that's usually not working out. I mean, at least this style, definitely not. So here, I don't like how it it has this second line, but I don't want to touch it because I'm almost afraid that's still better if I, or maybe I touch it a little bit. So if you want to retouch, it's completely dry. So what I would do, I'm not sure it will work out, but let's hope, take a big brush, make it wet and just pre-wet a little bit that area very fast so you don't because you don't want to move the previous layer of paint and i try to darken it <laughs> it's either work or not let's see and so now i just leave it so you can see this is pretty thick and very white. So maybe I just put a gray lazur paint on it, very light, just to not look so artificial. And I think that's the last thing I'm doing. And it's done. And it's really not a hard painting, honestly. Uh, you can see it's done in an hour and it goes really fast because you just use big brush and you just put down the big areas. 
So I'm very confident you can do a very similar result. If, if you want to see more, I have a few tutorials. I think I, I counted last time, but I forgot. It's about 16 or so on Skillshare. You can, you can use Skillshare free for, um, it's depend on a, a current promotion, but usually a week or two. Just make sure if you don't want to stay there, to you, you come off uh, before they charge your card. But it's really free for a week or two. Check it out. Um, I also have several YouTube uh, tutorial. If you want to help me, first you can watch the tutorial all the way because I need 4,000 watch hour uh, to monetize my YouTube. And I'm very far from that. So... And that would be really nice to get some money uh, for this, but I cannot do until uh, I have the 4,000 watch hour. Second, uh, you can sign up to Skillshare using my referral link and watch my videos. That also would be a big help. Uh, third, uh, I sell originals on Etsy. Actually, today I uploaded like 20, at least 20 new paintings uh, and mostly not cat. <laughs> uh, it's, my, my, my Etsy is full of cats, but today I uploaded a lot of nudes and landscape and, and, and still life, everything. So there will be much more than just cat. If you go now to look, it's under the name Bodorka. And Thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching <laughs> my um, and thank you for the promise to making a pay playlist from my tutorials. Yeah, so I really would like to monetize my YouTube. It probably will take a year. <laughs> so before I reach that point. So if you want to help watch the videos and I'm done. Thank you for being here and hope many of you will try and i really hope next time somebody will paint with me not just me alone i'm trying to read the the last question uh I don't understand the question. If you do in which you use salt and trans orange, I don't understand it. what is the question here. So yes, usually I use, <laughs> I'm not sure what is the question, but I use a uh, transparent orange from Horadam usually and lamb black for either from Horadam or Daniel Smith. If I do a uh, orange black cat, I really like to use kitchen salt. Uh, you will see several videos with kitchen salt, both on YouTube and Skillshare. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, actually, my next tutorial I'm uploading, it's ready. I just need to uh, make the comments and uh, so I need to work on, it will take a day or two, but my next uh, Skillshare tutorial will be a uh, um, uh, salt like exactly the tortoise shell cat with the using um, salt and transparent orange. But uh, I, I didn't decide yet what will be next week here, or I'm not sure it's next week, but the next tutorial, probably next weekend, but I don't want to promise because I have a real job. So, um, so if I do a tutorial next time, which is probably in a week or two on a weekend, then I try to do a tortoise shell then. But uh, then please paint. <laughs> so I usually put down uh, the list, what you need. And actually, you can look my video on YouTube with exactly the thing you're talking about. So tortoise shell cat with salt. So that's the, the list that, that you can find. Everybody who want to paint with me, you can find the list you need. I mean, the tools and the materials. And please paint with me. It would be so much more fun, I think. If I'm not painting alone. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody, to being here. 
and please watch my tutorials and see you next time. Bye.